Now, if y'all thought that y'all heard the last of Diddy's freak offs, well, you better think again because Jaguar Wright just came out again to expose one more victim of Diddy's freak offs. And that's none other than his former assistant, Mr. Fonsworth Bentley. Now, y'all know you remember Fonsworth Bentley as that super fine, stylish man who carried Diddy's umbrella everywhere he went. Well, Jaguar is now claiming that Fonsworth Bentley was more than just Diddy's assistant and umbrella carrier because Diddy also allegedly made Fonz his boy toy and forced him into freak offs. Now Fonsworth's disappearance from the industry has had people confused for a long time because he just randomly disappeared from Hollywood just when his music career was starting to take off. But according to Jaguar, this all has to do with the crazy things that he saw and was forced to do while working for Diddy. So did Diddy really SA him or was he really planning to pimp Fonz out to his friends? Y'all, let's get into this tea. All right, so let's dive into this whole Diddy saga because seriously, it's got more twists and turns than a roller coaster ride. I mean, you couldn't even dream up this level of drama if you tried. For the past six months, it's been a one wild ride after another. And just when you think it can't possibly get any crazier, boom, another curveball comes flying. You know how we've heard all the rumors about Diddy's legendary parties and the wild stuff that supposedly goes down? Well, buckle up because Diddy's former assistant, Fonsworth Bentley, just drop some major truth bombs about what really goes on behind the scenes. And let me tell y'all, it's kind of juicy. Now, first off, Fonsworth didn't just spill this tea. He straight up dumped the whole kettle. He spilled about how his role with Diddy wasn't just fetching coffee and running errands and being his manservant. Diddy made it out to be. No, sir, allegedly he was way more than that. According to Fonsworth Bentley, he was Diddy's stylist, his life coach, and wait for it, his um romantic partner? Yeah, you read that right. Apparently, Fonsworth was giving Diddy more than just fashion advice if you catch my drift. Allegedly, he was playing multiple roles in Diddy's life, including, shall we say, a very intimate one. If you're thinking what I'm thinking, whoa, too much information, trust me, you're not alone. But hey, that's Hollywood. Seriously, we gotta start questioning why Diddy always seems to be in some kind of situation with the young men that are working for him. I mean, it's not like everyone's got the same story about him by coincidence. But here's Fonsworth Bentley spilling the tea and Little Rod stirring up drama. And let's not even touch on the whole mess with Usher cause y'all that's a Pandora's box of gossip that we ain't even ready to open yet. But let's continue with Fonsworth Bentley. Back in the early 2000s, he was the talk of the town, rolling with Diddy, turning heads left and right. And I'm telling you, that man was fine as wine, truth be told. And he knew how to work that wardrobe. In an industry full of baggy pants and sweatbands and A in their white tees, O in their white tees, Fonsworth Bentley knew how to work a true dapper man's wardrobe. Turns out he wasn't just eye candy though. Diddy brought him on as a combo deal, part assistant, part stylist. See, Diddy was on a mission to revamp his image after the whole nightclub shooting fiasco with Jennifer Lopez and Shine. Y'all remember that mess, right? Well, Diddy dodged a bullet quite literally, and walked away clean while Shine got stuck with a 10-year jail term. But despite all the heat, did he manage to wiggle his way out of that serious trouble, keeping his freedom intact? And that's where Fonsworth Bentley stepped in, helping Diddy polish up his act, looking good while doing it. But even with that, Diddy was catching all kinds of heat after that case, like he couldn't catch a break. The media was all over him, throwing shade at him left and right, and he needed a serious image overhaul and fast. And that's where Fonsworth came in. The style guru came to the rescue. He swooped in, switched up Diddy's entire look, and had him look as sharp in no time. Now remember how Diddy switched up his name from Puff Daddy to P Diddy? Yeah, that was all part of the rebranding, and you best believe his haters still call him Puffy whenever they want to stir the pot, like 50 Cent loves to do whenever he trolls Diddy on Instagram. But anyways, back to Fonsworth, he worked his magic on Diddy, and let me tell y'all, that iconic picture of him holding an umbrella over Diddy is still a classic. I don't know about y'all, but it brings me back to my college days, and it's just pure gold. Slowly but surely though, Fonsworth helped Diddy shake off that old scandalous vibe and step into a new fresh spotlight. And here's the thing about Fonz, he wasn't just a pretty face, no. He was smart as a whip and he knew how to play the game. Working alongside Diddy, he learned how to play the Hollywood game like a pro, learning the ins and outs of the industry. And you better believe he used that knowledge to fuel his own ambitions. Smart move if you ask me. He was so close with Diddy and his crew that he even gave him the nickname Fonsworth Bentley because his real name is Derek Watkins. Gene Deal spoke about how this nickname came about and this is what he had to say. So Tony DeNaro was like, 
yo, we got to think of a name for you, man. And if you're going to be his personal assistant and um, slash butler slash umbrella carrier, whatever you going to do, you understand? We got to think of a name for you. We're we going to try to make you like Bentley or either uh, uh, Fonsworth or either Bent. You got to be, you know, you got to have that kind of persona. You got to dress all the time, be neat and the whole nine yards. And then the dude, Derek, was playing with him like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know how to do that. I could be over the top. You know, he was acting like that. You know what I'm saying? I could be over the top. So he was saying that. And uh, the dude, Tony De Niro, says, we got to figure out a name for you, man. It's got to be on the level of, you know, those characters. He said, He's gotta, you got to be like Fonsworth. You got to be like Bender. He said, F it. we're just going to call you Fonsworth Bentley. And he said, I like it. And they start calling him that. Now let me tell y'all something about Diddy. That man ain't exactly known for helping his crew or staff get a foot in the industry. And he does not do any favors if he isn't getting something in return. And that's just a fact. I mean, he held onto his artist master's rights tighter than a kid clutching onto their favorite toy. And he only gave the masters back when he needed some good publicity because he had to know that Cassie's lawsuit was coming. But here's the interesting thing. Bonsworth was like the golden exception to Diddy's rule. Once he got in with Diddy, it was like he had a backstage pass to the whole music scene. He dipped his toes into the music world and left footprints all over some of our major rap albums, like the band's Too Hot for TV back in 2002. You might also remember him from the skit Good Day, Good Sir on Outkast's speaker box The Love Below in 2003. I mean, he was all over these music videos, and he didn't stop there because Fonsworth made a cameo in Kanye West's workout plan, and that's when things started heating up. He got his name into credits as a co-writer on some of Kanye's Jesus album tracks like On Sight, Black Skinhead, and I'm God and Hold My Liquor, and they all went gold. But let's not forget his involvement in Obama's legendary Yes We Can campaign. Back in 2008, Fonsworth Bentley was everywhere, y'all. Unstoppable ain't even the word because Fonz was putting his back into it big time. But this allegedly is where things started to go wrong and get very shady. Picture this. Fonsworth is on the up and up, making moves in the industry, and then suddenly, out of the nowhere, he's gone. Poof. He moved out of LA to Atlanta, got married, had kids, and has been living the behind the scenes quiet life. Now I get it, some people find out they're really not about that spotlight life and they crave their privacy, and they don't want any part of the chaos and drama that comes with being a celeb. But here's the thing, I don't think Fonsworth was one of those people. He spent years hustling and chasing his dreams, but just when he's about to catch him, he throws in the towel and gives up. Nah, something ain't adding up here, y'all. But hold on to your edges, because Fonsworth Bentley finally came clean about why he dipped out of the industry, and let me tell you, it's a nasty, nasty business. Allegedly, Diddy had him playing the role of his, um, let's call it like it is, his boy toy. Yeah, you heard me right. Allegedly, Diddy had him wrapped around his finger. He was sick and tired of playing house with Diddy, if you know what I mean. Now, I wish I could say that I'm shocked by with all this stales and scandals flying around about Diddy lately. It just kind of sides with everything in the narrative, doesn't it? Allegedly, Diddy had a whole young roster of dudes like him, all under his thumb, playing out his fantasies. But let's just say what allegedly went down at Diddy with those parties, yeah, definitely not safe for work if you catch my drift. Ooh, it's just so scandalous. But I gotta say, Fonsworth's story is making me think, what else is going on behind the shadows of those Diddy parties? Because if what we already know is just the tip of the iceberg, then we're in for a wild ride. According to Fonsworth, he eventually decided to leave Diddy because he was apparently about to pull a little Rob move on him. Yeah, you know the whole pimping out to industry friends thing. And he tried to pull a little Little Rod and Cuba Gooding Jr. situation. And let me tell y'all, that was the final straw. Because allegedly, Fonsworth was not having it anymore and he bounced. And he bounced hard. Fonsworth must have been shook by what he claims Diddy had in store for him when he decided to leave Hollywood completely. Allegedly, he completely lost faith in the industry and the people in the industry after seeing the freaky stuff that went down at Diddy's parties. Atlanta became his sanctuary, a place to start fresh and build his own family and raise his kids. But his is where the plot thickens. 
Jaguar Wrights got her own two cents to add into the mix. According to her, Diddy had Fonsworth wrapped around his finger, plain and simple. And she didn't hold back with that. She also spilled the tea even harder. Now, if there are two people that you can trust to expose somebody, it's Jaguar. And she's bound to expose Jay-Z and Diddy. Because she has stories for days when it comes to these two. And she never gets tired of spilling. But in an interview, she backed up Fonsworth Bentley's story about how Diddy allegedly made Fonz his boy toy. Let me let me let me ask you this. What what do you think Diddy and Fonsworth Bentley's real relationship was? Concubine. Master. Jaguar also claimed that the reason that Fonsworth got married so soon was because he was trying to heal from the trauma of being forced into Diddy's slavery. Because he had to do the freak offs. So you think you think he was Diddy's concubine? Absolutely. He was too complicit and he was too compliant. And he just disappeared. He disappeared faster than Mace did. Mace went when Mace him. ran from Diddy, you could see the trailer just fire from his footsteps <laughs> as he ran. That is to true. The um, but I, I just I don't understand why people don't ask why. People, oh, yeah, yeah, he gone. Oh, okay. Nobody bothered to ask why. Why doesn't anybody ever want to know why? The one thing about Jaguar is that she's never been caught in a lie yet, and nobody's ever sued her for making up stories, and that kind of says something. However, Gene has another side of the story, claiming that the real reason that Fonsworth left is that Diddy caught him stealing and fired him. I don't want to say anything against Puff anyway because Puff got shit on him. And I ain't talk about no sexual sh you or none of that sh The nick was stealing, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yo, bro. The nick is a, yo. He got, he, I don't want to put that on sticky fingers. That nick, that nick right there, bro. Don't lay nothing down around him. You hear me? Don't lay nothing down around dude right there. Dog, Jennifer Lopez had, these boots, they cost $5,000. I'm like, what kind of fucking boots cost $5,000? Now you gotta realize, this is like in 2000, early 2000s. These boots cost $5,000. And because she was gonna be out of, out of the country or something like that, she didn't have them come to her house down in the village because she would have never got it because they'd be stealing her stuff down there at her apartment. So she had them come to Puff House. She wanted these boots so bad. She was mad. We, you know, they was they looked through everything trying to find Jennifer boots. Cause Puff had like a, yo, Puff people used to just give him shit and send him shit from everywhere. So he had this room, this mail room, in his house with numbers just shit that he never even opened. But I don't know how far where Bentley found that shit. But we went over there to his house. And we found a lot of Jennifer sh and everybody else's sh that belong to Puff. However, Fonsworth is denying this outrightly, claiming that Diddy is allegedly trying to silence him yet again by tarnishing his image. According to him, Diddy allegedly set him up and planted that stuff at his place to discredit him so that people wouldn't believe him if he tried to expose Diddy for making him his gosh mash magosh partner. Now, Fonz also pointed out how Diddy seems to have a habit of setting his artists up and trying to paint them in a bad light whenever he falls out with them. And get this, allegedly he isn't the only one that Diddy tried to force into this continuous intimate affair because he allegedly did the same thing to members of his girl group, Danity Kane. That's the reason that Diddy always seemed to have a problem with Audrey O'Day, one of those famous members that wouldn't give in to his demands. So let's rewind back to the mid 2000s when Aubrey was a part of the girl group Danity Kane. Y'all remember Danity Kane? Who do you got a first aid kit on you? Do, do you? Yeah, them. The making the band members of five talented ladies, Andrea, Don, D. Woods, Shannon, and of course, Aubrey, and they met in the MTV show Making the Band. Now, Diddy saw potential in these ladies, so he scouted them out and signed them to his bad boy label. And when Diddy's track record and the label's rep expectations were sky high, that the group was going to be the next big thing. But behind the scenes, y'all, it was a whole different story. See, 
see, Aubrey wasn't one to hold her tongue, and did he? Well, let's just say he likes things to go his way. And this led to some very messy clashes between them. Aubrey was strong-willed natured and didn't exactly blend with Diddy's need for control, and the sparks evidently flew. They butted heads more times than you can count because Aubrey wasn't about to let anyone silence her. Yeah, she spoke her mind loud and clear and Diddy wasn't always feeling it. And when these two clashed, whoo, you could practically feel the heat from miles away. Question, how, what do you want to look like though? Do you want to well, look I like a playboy, on... playmate? Do you want to look like you? Come, I'm done with all of that. No, no, no. Like, what do you want to look okay. like, though? I'll tell what you. What do you want to look I'll like, you. though? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'm not focused on me, 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 me. I'm focused on what this group should look like and how I should fit in this situation. You like big hair, though. I don't you like do big hair. You do like big hair. You like big hair. You, you like a, lo you like a lot of makeup and all that. Actually, I don't. I don't like big hair. I don't like certain makeup. I'm very flexible with what you want to do, and I've worked with everything that you've thrown at me. I'm not at. seeing the flexibility. You gaming me. Your hair people came in today, and they said this is how it needs to be. You know what I'm talking I don't about. Care. You pushing. You're another, pushing your worried. own image, though. I'm not worried about whether my hair is straight, curly, whatever. I'm not here in a group to have curly, straight, big makeup, whatever. I'm here in a group to sing with my group, and that is all I care about. For real, like I, maybe you just don't get me and we You're don't get each me, other. You're me because if I pulled in all of the makeup artists and all of the hair people, they would not say that. And Aubrey wasn't about to let Diddy mold her into something she wasn't. She made it very crystal clear to him, but as it turns out, that wasn't even the real reason behind their constant clashes. Allegedly, Diddy was making some inappropriate moves behind the scenes, if you catch my drift. He allegedly tried to make some moves on the ladies and they shut him down, and things took a turn for the worst. But here's where it gets sticky. Diddy slapped them with some ironclad NDAs, effectively silencing them. And they couldn't speak about what was really going on behind the scene because they were legally bound to keep their lips sealed. But as it turns out, that wasn't the only time he tried to hit them with NDAs. Remember how in September last year, he made a big show of giving his artists back their masters? He said, it's just doing the right thing. I think we as an industry and as a people have to look in the mirror and make a shift forward. It's about evolving, leading by example, and reforming an industry that needs it in a world that needs reform. I'll tell you one thing that I do want people to know. It's not a publicity stunner or anything like that. What he conveniently left out was the shady move that he had pulled before handing those masters back. See, before he passed them over, he made all of his artists sign an NDA, swearing them to secrecy about their time at Bad Boy Records. And back then, it seemed like a goodwill gesture, but now, well, we know much better. Diddy was playing the PR game, trying to clean up his image again before things hit the fan. The thing is, not everybody was fooled by this so-called generosity, and some of his former artists saw right through the smoke and mirrors. They refused to put that pen to paper and sign away their rights to speak their truth. And you guessed it, Aubrey was definitely one of them. Have to release him for any claims or wrongdoings or actions prior to the date of the release. I have to sign an NDA that I will never disparage Puff, Bad Boy, Janice Combs, or Justin Combs Music, or EMI, or Sony ever in public. So what's happening is artists, some of them, not all of them, are being given streaming royalties and ownership back over our publishing on songs that we wrote. Um, at a time when you know that you have to stream a song a million times to make point a, a, a cent. Yeah. Okay. It, it's hundreds of dollars. And me as somebody that's a girl's girl, I hit everyone in my group and said, absolutely do not take this deal. She also claimed that the masters were only worth about 800 or $900 less than a thousand. And Diddy was trying to make them sign their souls away. She managed to get the other members of her group to not sign the NDA, and Gene Deal backed her up on this. It's the same thing that he gave to all his artists when he gave them their publishing back. I'm gonna give y'all y'all publishing, but y'all can't talk about Janice Cone, Justin Cone, uh, Sony, Bad Boy, or anything that happened. Y'all can't talk about none of that. But there's some artists that didn't say anything, that didn't sign it, and they able to talk about anything they want to. And I think that's those girls that was, I think, Danny Kane. 
because she didn't sign the NDA, Aubrey is free to talk about her experience with Diddy and y'all, she has been spilling. She revealed that Diddy would often put the girls against each other and try to cause division so that he could control them. We have to tell during a time in music where there were gatekeepers, there were people that owned labels like Puff running things, and the way that the divisions and the divisiveness occurred and the things that we experienced between each other and us against the system are fucking insane. She then claimed that not only would Diddy body shame them, but he also tried to hook up with them and got mad when they turned him down. Why somebody would want to fire somebody. Can you give us a little? <laughs> um, I wasn't willing to uh, do what was expected of me. Mm. Not talent wise, but in other areas. Mm -hmm. And were other girls doing? I was the only one that was in those types of positions under Diddy. Mm -hmm. He was the hardest person that you can work for and it was torture. And not the work part of it, but the other stuff. Mind games, like just all the girls were so divided and the men and the people running it were the, had their hands in it moving everything as a woman through the men that i was around and that was very traumatic i don't think any of us have healed from that diddy would be like you're not hot anymore like what happened you don't have anything like you don't have any curves you're looking like just you're not looking like i can't get people to think that you're my good looking person well the rest of the group eventually gave in to diddy and did what he wanted them to do but Aubrey wasn't about to let anybody bully her and you can bet that's why she and diddy were always locking horns he just couldn't stand her spine of steel. Well, nowadays, with all the dirt coming up, it's clear as day that Diddy was straight up bullying these girls. Right under our noses. Back then, reality TV was cutthroat, so most folks shrugged it off or, or just didn't realize how messed up it all was and thought they were just chasing the dream. But with Cassie's lawsuit and the flood of other legal battles hitting the scene, people are finally connecting the dots. I remember all those times Diddy was micromanaging their looks and actions. Turns out it wasn't just about their image. It was allegedly part of a darker game. According to Gene Dill, Diddy was allegedly pimping them out to other dudes, and he wanted them looking their best for his, um, clients. As it turns out, Aubrey still holds a major grudge against Diddy because she has been trolling him since the lawsuit started. When Diddy released a statement that said, Enough is enough. For the last couple of weeks, I have sat silently and watched people try to assassinate my character and destroy my reputation and my legacy. Sickening allegations have been made against me by individuals looking for a quick payday. Let me be absolutely clear, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Well, Aubrey reposted his statement on her Instagram stories, adding Kanye West's song, Jail, in the story, and wrote R. Kelly flow bar for bar. I'm fighting for my life! Well, according to Jaguar, the reason Danity Kane split is all because of Diddy's fetishes. And like him, most of the women in the group had to leave the industry because they saw too much crazy stuff that they couldn't even begin to process. Jaguar's latest claims have had the fans in a chokehold, and they've been leaving comments saying, Fonsworth disappeared when he saw all the mess that Diddy had going on. Then all of a sudden, Diddy made a public statement. Fonsworth outgrew his position. No, he saw things and wasn't with the ish. Then his frat brothers helped him get out of that world. I always thought it was weird, a grown man following another grown man with an umbrella and wiping his face? And I believe it. I'm glad someone mentioned him. Their whole relationship was questionable. There's no way a straight man would carry an umbrella and wipe a man's mouth after each bite of food he eats. But what do y'all think about this? Are y'all glad that Fonsworth Bentley got away from Diddy? We've been seeing Fonsworth Bentley popping up doing some Kanye stuff. Do you think he's alright? Drop your thoughts and comments below and then check out this next video.